Hey everyone, Nick from Nick's Crossing here. Welcome back to the train room for an awesome train review. Guys, today we're knocking off one of my bucket list items. Up here in the studio, we finally have a set of DD1 electric locomotives. They're quite heavy. Check this out from MTH. So here we go, everyone, all aboard. All right, guys, so the DD1 box cab electric has puzzled me for years. I remember going over to the Strasburg Railroad as a kid, walking across the street to the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania wondering what the heck are those things are they steam powered are they electric are they diesels i just had no idea as a kid and i was always fascinated with these early electric locomotives how scary they are what is it used for where did it travel from and to so these are actually um these kind of fill a void in my life right there of wondering what they were and now i can run them whenever i want they're no longer retired they're alive and well on my electrified railroad which is kind of cool so the other cool thing is that these run just like how they would back in the day. They're three rail electric. So uh, it's kind of interesting. I'm bringing these back to life with just a different type of third rail. But anyways, guys, the history of these is pretty awesome. These locomotives go back until 1910, uh, being created by the Pennsylvania Railroad at the Juniata Shops in Altoona. Uh, up until 1911, they created 66 uh, locomotives total creating 33 semi-permanent coupled pairs. What I mean by that is that they could disconnect one, replace it with another, connect the electronics and have a matched pair, but they always ran in a matched pair. Now the motors were created by Westinghouse along with the electronics with their specialized, they call it a 315-A direct current commutating pole electric motor with monocoque cab. So that's their fancy terminology for the motor which you guys can see here. And the motor made up, like, I think it said 65% of the weight of the total locomotive. It's just a huge, huge motor. I uh, also have the counterweights on the side. So inside the locomotive, there are two counterweights. And outside the locomotive cab, there are two counterweights as well. There are actually two cabs on the locomotive pair. So you get one on each end. And these only ran up until the 1920s for the PRR being replaced by the L5 locomotive, which just looks ridiculous. Check this out right here. Just looks like another uh, fantasy locomotive. Did Totally didn't exist, but it did. Totally did exist. Now, the other blow to the DD1, these ran off of 650 DC, so direct current. Uh, 650 volts direct current. Now, later on, the railroad was switching to AC third rail. Now, that was the Pennsylvania line from Philly to New York. Uh, their third rail tracks were being converted to AC. So eventually the PRR started uh, retiring these in the late 30s to the Long Island Railroad. They kept a handful of these. After a while they kept two of these and they used them for um, shuttling uh, milk and also passenger cars back and forth to different yards and such. Now the main reason for box cab electrics, the whole city of New York forbid the uh, firing of a steam locomotive inside of their transit tunnels for safety reasons. So you'd cause a fire, an explosion underground, could light a station on fire, it'd just be catastrophic. So they um, basically forbid all steam locomotives inside their transit tunnels. Now these are great locomotives for shifting cars and transit service. So they did live a long life. Uh, the last DD1 pair ran up into the late 1960s. I read in here 1968. Then Penn Central actually donated their um, one set of box cap electrics to the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania. And those numbers right there are 3936 and 3937. So those are preserved, well, preserved at the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania. I wish they could fix them up and put them inside. They are very historic locomotives, and they're the last two to ever survive. All right, guys, so my box cap electrics are a little bit newer than 1910. These were built in 2003, so already 20 years old right there. They have a PS2 board in them, and they're the 5-volt board. So... Uh, some gremlins did arrive in the box. I did have to do some uh, inner workings with these. I had to re-solder all 10 uh, tether points with these. And honestly, I wanted to rewire the thing to just be a solid tether. So you, it would just be one unit always. But uh, the, the tether board, the receiving end or the connector end, has um, two diodes in there. So I'd have to make like a breadboard circuit and rewire everything to that. So maybe that's a project for the future. But I really would like to just hardwire this thing. I think all the problems with this locomotive are tether related. And it's not the tether itself, it's the receiving end. So uh, the female end of the tether. So uh, this locomotive now runs correctly, but it does have some goofy things that happen. Uh, when giving the board power, the whistle turns on. Um, when using DCS, 
the whistle turns on until you link to the locomotive. And then also, um, I think it's the rear headlight stays on even when it's in forward. So that's kind of goofy as well. But I think everything is related to that tether issue right there. But anyways, guys, this engine is actually equipped with freight sound. So you're saying, Nick, it's a passenger engine. But remember what I said before, when they went to Long Island, they kind of changed duty of service from passenger to some freight. So this locomotive does a hybrid of things. It does um, some PFA announcements, passenger freight announcements that are passenger. And then there's a little bit of a side note there. They're delivering milk, which I thought was just super creative on MTH's part to add that into the sound set of this awesome locomotive. So I'm going to spin you guys around. We'll look at some of the details on the locomotive itself. Then we'll get into running this awesome locomotive. All right, guys, so here is the B unit. The A unit is up here. This is the A and this is the B. So each set gets an A and B, and they're both tethered together. The tether is hiding under here. And whoever ran this before, I bet you they ran it on like 031. But I honestly recommend any of you guys in the model train world run your locomotives on anything larger than 31. If it says minimum curve 31, go to a 42 or 48. Um, I have got 54 inch curves and 72. I know a lot of you guys don't have room for it, but these tethers are very fragile. Like I said, there's 10 wires running through this tether right here. And uh, if any of them get dislodged or anything or disconnected, the engine will not operate correctly. It can end up frying something. So. Just recommending you guys, larger curbs are always the way to go. But anyways guys, so this locomotive, tons of detail. So my favorite detail, the spoked wheels here, and also the counterweight, which you guys will see spin around. There's another counterweight up here, there's the drive shaft, it goes up here, and the counterweight's right there. The motor actually sits on an angle uh, into the drive trucks there, or the drive train. So it's a really nice design, and it is a dual motor. So there's a motor in the back on this unit right here, motor on the back of this unit here. Also, both units are die cast, so they're very heavy. They also have a lot of tractive effort with the traction tires added. On top of that, we also have the third rail shoe up front right here. Here's your pickup shoe. And you don't have any spoked wheels or anything like that, just normal O-scale wheels. A ladder going up. We do have chains for the front. And also on each side is a cab figurine. So on the other side, there is an engineer. Uh, we do not have dual cab figurines. We just have an engineer on each side. Now up top is really cool. We actually have a bell. This does not swivel, but it's kind of hard to see. But we do have a bell on top. Both headlights do light up and everything. We also have some wire details up top, most likely for a radio of some sort back in the day. Just thought that was really interesting. Now the sound set on here is kind of odd. It has a steam whistle sound set. So if we give her some power really quick, she's going to start up. And if just hitting the whistle, it has a banshee style whistle, just like my decapod used to have. And here's the bell, just like the decapod. Now what you guys just heard there is actually the compressor turning on, which I thought was a really cool feature. And you'll actually hear it wind down. Alright guys, let's hit the PFA announcement. So passenger freight announcement here. I'm going to hit activate. Jamaica. This stop, Jamaica. So that's your arrival phase. Here's segment one. Yeah, hey, friend, I think this is your stop. It is? Oh, thanks. Now boarding. Please have your tickets ready. Segment two right here. Good day, sir. Good day, ma'am. May I see your ticket, please? Thank you. Watch your step. There's that compressor sound that I love. I thought that was so cool. They added that in there. We're going to go to segment three. Have your attention, folks. The shipment of milk from Sheffield Farms Dairy is larger than usual today. It will take a little longer to load than normal. We'll get underway as soon as we can. And that's the uh, freight announcement right there for the milk, which I thought was just super cool. 
Okay, folks, the milk is loaded and we're about to get underway. Those of you with connections to Penn Station should have just enough time to find your train. Alright guys, so for today's run session we're running the DD1s with a new Pennsylvania porthole style baggage car from Lionel, two MTH REA Express reefers, Lionel baggage car with recessing doors, and then two Williams MTH coaches right there at Silhouettes. So here we go everyone, all aboard.
right, guys, that's going to conclude this review of the beautiful Long Island Railroad DD1s from MTH Electric Trains, going all the way back to 2003. Chessie wanted to say hi, so she jumped up here. There she is. But anyways, guys, uh, these are awesome locomotives. They're fantastic runners. They also have that PS2 5-volt board, so be careful of those. Uh, usually it's a tether issue, but sometimes the board can be bad as well. And my MTH system up here is not working well. It's uh, overheating, so I have to take a look at that as well. But anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video and you're new to the channel, always consider subscribing. Giving the video a thumbs up really helps out. Love reading the comments. Love to know your thoughts on these beautiful locomotives. Till next time, everyone, happy railroading. Stay safe. We'll see you next time. See you guys.